Hello today I'm going to talk about hemangioma uh, when we see uh, vascular anomalies one third of children have a vascular birth mark or anomaly at birth and from this one percent have significant and uh, require evaluation and also uh, they might uh, require complex uh, treatment modalities uh, not everything is hemangioma despite appearance so there are so different things that looks like hemangioma but they are really they are not hemangioma for example as you see on an image uh, on the first, it is a caposiform hemangioendothelioma on the uh, cheek of a child, and on the uh, right side, uh, there is significant big swelling on the uh, right neck of an infant, which is due to lymphatic malformation, and the lower part is uh, an infantile hemangioma. Uh, when we see uh, the difference between uh, vascular tumors and the vascular malformation, uh, vascular tumor arises by endothelial hyperplasia whereas vascular malformation arises by dysmorphogenesis. And vascular tumor is small or absent at birth, and it's rapid uh, grows during the infancy and involution during childhood, whereas vascular malformation is present at birth, and the growth is proportional to the child, and uh, there is no chance of regression. Uh, when we see the classification of hemangioma and the vascular malformation, uh, which is uh, accepted by International Society for the Study of Vascular Anomalies in uh, 1996, uh, vascular birth marks is classified into two tumors and malformations and the malformations are classified into high flow and low flow high flow is mainly from arterial whereas low flow is uh, capillary venous or lymphatic or it might be combined whereas tumors include hemangiomas and other tumors and when we see uh, uh, tumors uh, which is classified as hemangioma and the other tumors hemangioma include infantile hemangioma and the congenital hemangioma Whereas other tumors include hemangioendotheliomas, tuftidangiomas, spindle cell hemangiomas, and the pyogenic uh, granuloma. Uh, well, from the most common differential diagnosis for hemangioma, Cassiabic uh, merit phenomena is the most common one. This is uh, described in 1914 by those two people, Cassiabic and merit, and it's an occurrence of profound thrombocytopenia in association with a vascular tumors. And, uh, it is characterized by conservative coagulopathy, which is characterized by thrombocytopenia, hypofibrinogenemia, and elevated DDMRs and PT and uh, PTT elevation. And it requires extensive chemotherapy for a risk of bleeding and uh, thrombocytopenia. So this might require uh, corticosteroids, vincristine, uh, and also other supportive management such as bleeding, uh, supportive treatments such as platelet transfusion, cryoprecipitate, and FFP transfusion and the like. Uh, this is an image of Akasabet Mary syndrome, and it's a, it's a capillary hemangioma, and it's characterized by thrombocytopenia, which is due to shortened platelet survival and the sequestration in a vascular malformation. So when we see about hemangioma, this is the most common tumor of infancy, and it is slightly more common in females, and it's more common in uh, premature infantis, and also those who have multiple gestation and also if the mother is having placenta previa and preeclampsia and family history is uncommon most of the time uh, more common in caucasian but it occurs in all races and the head and the neck uh, location is more common uh, than trunk and uh, extremities and 50 to 20 percent have a multiple lesions uh, this is a type of hemangioma not all hemangiomas are similar there are different types of hemangioma this is strawberry hemangioma and the strawberry hemangioma is a red mark found on one out of uh, 10 babies and it is as small as a freckle or it might be as large as a coaster so it may be small or big and it consists of small closely packed blade vessel and the 95 percent disappear by the time the child is 10 years of age uh, this one is a cavernous or deep hemangioma in this case it is a deeply situated red blue uh, spongy mass of tissue filled with a blade found in two out of uh, 100 babies and it grows rapidly in the first six months and it is composed of a larger more mature vascular element and some of the uh, lesions disappear on their own uh, whereas uh, when we see uh, the most common benign tumor in childhood that is about infantile hemangioma and the formal name when people use uh, refers to hemangioma so when people say hemangioma they are referring to uh, infantile hemangioma most of the time this is the most common benign tumor in childhood and it affects one in 10 children and it is increased in uh, the following population such as uh, premature births, multiple gestational babies or twin and triple, in vitro fertilization 
Caucasians and the females. In this case, GLUT1 is positive most of the time and they respond to propranolol very well. And rapid proliferation followed by involution phase is there. Uh, so uh, this is uh, another type of hemangioma which is called congenital hemangioma. Congenital hemangioma is classified into two. Uh, rapidly involuting congenital hemangioma and then involuting uh, congenital hemangioma. And it is difficult to distinguish both of them uh, if, by their appearance. But both of them are glute negative most of the time, which is uh, when we see that infantile hemangioma, infantile hemangioma is glute uh, po positive, whereas this one is glute negative. And the medical therapy is ineffective for uh, specifically rapidly involuting congenital hemangioma, whereas uh, non involuting congenital hemangioma may require laser or another uh, surgical therapy. Uh, when we see natural history of hemangioma, 30% are visible at birth and they are seen as red macules and greater than 80% became apparent during the first few weeks of life. And they have two phases, proliferative phase and involutive phase. Proliferative phase lasts from 6 to 9 months, whereas involutive phase lasts from uh, 1 year to 5 years. And they must regress completely by age 7 years. And 20% have a residual scarring and fibrofatty tissue. Uh, when we see the management difference between the different types of hemangiomas, the management depends on the location and also the number. Uh, regarding the uh, management based on position, preorbital hemangioma, uh, this is common, fairly common. And uh, in this case, uh, we should have to worry about uh, visual impact when there is ambalopia, astigmatism, and blindness, and careful uh, ophthalmologic examination, and also imaging such as CT scan and MRI might be needed. And most of them respond to propranolol and also steroids, and uh, patching an affected eye daily might be needed. And uh, when hemangioma is distributed around a bird area, uh, airway involvement and the rebound of steroid is common. And the pro uh, it might proliferate up to 12 to 18 months. And it might cause also airway uh, compromise. Uh, the other is a syndromic types of hemangioma. Uh, this is uh, the syndrome, which is uh, as you see on the image which is composed of posterior fossa malformation, hemangioma, arterial anomalies, cardiac anomalies, and eye abnormalities. And the sternal cleft also, preambilical raphe syndrome might also be uh, there. Uh, which, uh, regarding this syndrome, uh, ophthalmologic exam, uh, cardiologic evaluation for uh, cardiac involvement and also neurologic evaluation and the developmental assessment is needed. And the MRI and the MRI angiography of the head, neck, and the uh, mediastinum might be needed. And also we should have to do CBC uh, and also we should have to consider other blade work such as liver and uh, renal and also thyroid function test. Uh, the other site is lumbosacral hemangioma. This is associated with a tethered cord, lipoma, a spinal defect and genitourinary anomalies and also anorectal malformation. Uh, so in this case we should have to look for asymmetrical gluteal uh, fold, uh, any craze and also any sacral pits, any masses and any tufts of the hair. Most of the time, uh, we don't need imaging of the spine uh, in this case, but the uh, reason when we should have to image. Uh, the other side is hepatic hemangioma. Uh, if there is five or more uh, hemangioma, we should have to investigate for hepatic hemangioma. So if the cutaneous hemangioma is more than five, we should have to send a screening for uh, hepatic hemangioma by abdominal ultrasound. And also, we should have to do equal to rule out cardiac involvement. Uh, imaging of uh, infantile hemangioma is not usually necessary. When imaging of infantile hemangioma is uh, performed, ultrasound is generally the preferred modality for diagnosis, whereas MRI is better to assess the extent of the lesion. And imaging might be required when the diagnosis is uncertain, when evaluation of the extent is necessary, and when the infantile hemangioma is a possible marker of uh, syndromes. Uh, or when response to therapy needs to be uh, monitored. Uh, regarding hepatic hemangioma, uh, if it is focal, it might have uh, arteriovenous or uh, portovenous shunts, and multiple skill lesion is common uh, in the case of hemangioma, and most skill lesions are often asymptomatic, and diffuse, diffuse lesions such as how I output uh, heart failure, abdominal compartment syndrome, profound hypothyroidism. Uh, can be there, and in this case, we should have to treat with uh, either propranolol, 
corticosteroid and also vincristin and the thyroid replacement based on their severity and also the involved organ and in certain case transplantation might be needed uh, regarding hemangioma we should have to consider treatment uh, when the hemangioma is ulcerated when it bleeds when it causes functional impairment when it causes infection when it grows rapidly and uncontrollably when it causes psychological uh, problems otherwise we don't treat all hemangioma so from uh, treatment of hemangioma when it is necessary uh, the first line is oral system corticosteroids uh, prednisolone 2 to 3 mg per kg per day uh, once daily and uh, slow tapering starts at around one month and the therapy will last for three to six months and short-term uh, effects and also long-term effects of uh, oral corticosteroid treatment should be followed and there is a uh, potential rebound of hemangioma when uh, steroid is uh, tapered and discontinued and uh, most of the time this is effective in more than 75 percent of uh, proliferative hemangiomas uh, uh, currently the most well accepted treatment is uh, propranolol uh, propranolol one to three milligram per kg per day this is a uh, vascular endothelial dose factor inhibitor and there is no controlled status but has rapidly become a new standard regarding propranolol and the therapy will last six months and short-term effects and long-term effects of a propranolol should be followed during treatment and the potential rebound of hemangioma when winning propranolol uh, can be then specifically in uh, non-proliferative type of hemangioma and this is effective in more than 85 percent of proliferating hemangiomas uh, the other currently available uh, medical treatment for hemangioma is interferon alpha 2 this benefits in inhibiting angiogenesis and stimulating endothelial cell prostacycline formation which prevents platelet trapping in the, uh, and interferon alpha 2 is administered in a daily subcutaneous injection of 1 to 3 million units per square meter of body surface area for an average of 7 months of therapy uh, 18 of 20 infants whose lesions were resistant to steroid therapy responded to interferon alpha 2 with a 50% regression rate and we should have to follow acute and uh, chronic side effects such as uh, fever, chills, and also retinal vasculopathy. Uh, so, uh, for steroid resistance hemangiomas, in addition to interferon uh, alpha 2, we can also give vincristin uh, 0.05 mg per kg weekly for 4 to 6 weeks and then uh, monthly for 6 to 12 months uh, of period. The other treatment is uh, laser treatment. Uh, the indication for laser treatment is for thin lesion and the telangiectasias and it appears to be useful for reducing pain and also promoting giving of uh, ulcerated hemangiomas. Uh, surgical procedures, uh, flashlight pumped uh, passive day laser is a treatment of choice for a superficial strawberry hemangiomas with a response rate of 60% and it penetrates to a depth of 1.8 mm and has a low risk of uh, scarring. Uh, this is uh, an ulcerated fascia hemangioma. In this case, for such ulcerated fascia hemangioma, we should have to give systemic and topical antibiotics, and also extra thin uh, duoderm should be given, and systemic steroid, and also pulsed day uh, laser is uh, needed for such ulcerated. Uh, recently, rapamycin was introduced. This is the most recent uh, treatment for. Uh, uh, hemangioma. The antivasculogenic effect of rapamycin has been shown in a, a mouse hemangioma model, and the drug has diminished the self renewal capacity of the uh, infantile hemangioma stem cells while simultaneously inducing uh, other anti angiogenic effects on infantile hemangioma and endothelial cells. Uh, so, uh, surgical uh, research indication include interfering with function, specifically eye, eye function, respiratory function, and the like. If it is ulcerated, if, if it has significant mass effect, and also for a possible cosmetic deformity, uh, surgical resection uh, can be undergone. Uh, thank you for your attention, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.